Hey guys, this is Nefarious411, and welcome to episode 29 of my Modded Survival series. In the uh, last episode, we played around with the Ender IO uh, farming machine, and basically it's been doing really well, except for the fact that it ran out of my axe. <laughs> so I need to take care of that problem. Um, that is going to be an issue, and why is it always raining? Um, I did play around with the device that we made in the last episode, which is this power buffer, and I think I figured out something. I am hoping, um, although it's probably going to prove me wrong right now. Uh, whoa, hello. So what I need to do is block that off so nobody can come and kill me. Um, I basically put the, uh, the power monitor right here, and it's basically monitoring only two machines. This one, which is 100,000 RF, and this one itself, which is also 100,000. So here, I should be able to emit the uh, redstone control whenever it's between a specific range. But the issue is basically this power buffer is dumping its power immediately into the uh, capacitor bank. So what I want to do, I probably want to change this so that it has a smaller output, like 128 RF per tick. Let's try that one for now. So this one's still receiving power. Yep, still receiving power. Um, and this one is storing more power. So it is drawing on uh, on this uh, solar generator. And basically, this will eventually fill up. This will stop the uh, the redstone signal. So then the red the uh, solar generator will then start. Um, getting power, generating power again. So I'm actually hoping that this works. Um, I'll probably need to uh, test this out, um, watch it for a little bit, babysit. And I think because of the uh, vibrant capacitor and the 25 million RF, there was no way that this system was going to work without a smaller buffer. So I'm glad that there's a thing called a power buffer. And uh, I was able to configure this, so it's pushing power on this side, receiving power on this side, and doing a push-pull on this side and that was because I need to be able to monitor so it needs to be able to see both sides um, it needs to receive power and it also needs to be able to uh, monitor I don't know if push pulls necessary but it seems to be working for me and this is reaching about 75 percent here in a couple of seconds <clears throat> so as soon as that hits this will go off I'm hoping Come on, don't prove me wrong. That redstone signal should go off, right? Emit when less than, oh, less than 75, but greater than, let's do 90. So it'll stop whenever it gets to 90, that's right. And you are going down, why are you going down? Oh, and this was my fear, uh, because of this, running out of energy. Um, let me disable this for right now. I think what I need to do is probably get this into a little healthier situation uh, because I started um, all of this a little bit too late. So now it's basically just draining the power. Um, can I do a push-pull there? Probably not a good idea. Well, maybe it is. Is a push-pull good? Let me just push. All right, so um, I do have to wait till morning, but let's try to, while we're waiting, take care of the situation that we have up here. We need an ax, and we have no way of cutting these trees down without some sort of ax. Um, so let's go downstairs to our production area, and I might as well sleep through the night. That way, it can start generating power out there, and I probably do need to uh, create a uh, chunk loader, because I really doubt those chunks are being kept open. So let me see, I probably could do the other uh, spot loaders, but this is a larger area, so I might as well just create a, uh, a full-size um, chunk loader. There we 
we go. That way I know that all of it's still loaded. And I'll probably just put this as center as I can. There we go. Show lasers. This is loading the entire area. No. It's missing a chunk. So up by one. Easy as that. Now it's basically the entire farm area minus the other building right here but as long as I don't grow anything past that line I should be fine and it looks like almost perfect I like that that's really good cool so let me go ahead and hide those lasers and I need to remember where that's at and it looks like an enderman came out here destroyed my garden so let me place that back clean up a little bit all right so let's uh, go ahead and run downstairs and let's figure out what we can do in regards to crafting. And I did not really p prepare for this. Um, so let me see what we have in regards to auto crafting. We have the auto workbench, and that might be fine. Does that require power? Probably. I don't know what this does. I don't think I've ever used one of these. So let me uh, go ahead and create one. Why not? I can always just burn it if I don't need it. There we go. Let's take a look. Um, a lot of crafting. All right. What does this do? Does this require power? Um, well, let's test it out. Sticks. Let me grab a couple of those. And wood. Um, because I'm thinking that I'll just use the supplies that I already have with, hmm, how does this work? Oh, there we go. Huh, I might actually do that. Let me see what this does once it completes. Because this doesn't require power, doesn't require a lot of knowledge, but I do need like three of these. All right, so because I need to be able to auto craft sticks and planks. So let me go ahead and create uh, two more of these and uh, run over there and we will be right back. All right, so after crafting a couple of these, um, I am ready to go and uh, not sure what I'm going to do here. Um, I think what I need to do is go ahead and pop this here. I did uh, run a item conduit uh, between the other uh, barrel here with extract and it's pushing it directly in here and I think the auto workbench will only craft one item at a time. So as you can see it's just stopped so we don't have to worry about anything getting filled up. It's probably a little on the slow side but I guess that's all right. Um, so let me configure this on um, cyan channel, always active. I don't know if this will be able to uh, pull out the other back, but we might as well try. So this is going to be in out. This is going to insert on cyan. And I don't have anything for this. Um, I do need that. All right, cool. So it is crafting all of that and it'll eventually fill up. So then uh, these will all be available. And the nice thing is it auto distributes. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. So now <clears throat> what do we need? We need, uh, we need to be able to push a couple of things because we need planks and well, might as well just put these all on the same channel. Yeah, let me configure this to be on the same channel. Um, so you, I'm gonna turn you back to green and you insert on green. Ugh, there we go. And I think this will uh, still prevent any other things to go in because you basically put in the other recipe and those are the only items that it can receive. So that is pretty good. So over here, I actually need two sticks and eventually that will 
be able to pull out of here as soon as I change the extract. Um, always. There we go. So now it's pulling in the uh, the sticks that are being created here. And this will get filled up eventually, I think. How's that working? There we go. So it's filling up and it's distributing um, amongst the two. And we also need planks. So let me grab a couple of planks and put you there. And this should also get filled up from this guy. I don't know what the uh, priority is. It might try to fill up this side first before it gets there. So that could be an issue. Hmm. Yeah, let me try to fill this guy up real quick manually. go there you're filled up so you should actually start receiving the planks that are created from over there and I should probably just go ahead and distribute that and let me go ahead and fill up the entire system <laughs> why not and I need more sticks there we go and you can go there it's out of balance, but I can fix that here in a little bit. So all of that is good. And this is producing the planks that are needed for both sides. And I think that'll work for us. Um, eventually it'll stop because this will create a single wooden axe and it'll just sit here until we actually uh, pull it out. So let me go ahead and get that prepared. That is cool how it auto distributes. That is really, really cool. <clears throat> all right. So now, you, I want probably uh, in out. So extract always. So that should continue to work. And insert, well, let's use the brown channel. Yeah. So this needs to be in out, insert on the green. And the product is the brown channel. Cool. So that should, well, I guess if I do that, it should automatically put that in there. Will that work? I don't know if I can insert from the bottom. Oh, wait, did I uh, change that to be always active? No, I didn't. Always active. It's on the same quote unquote network, right? No, it's not. Um, hmm. Well, let's make it part of the same network. Why not? Well, I think that worked and it went through an entire axe. So let me just watch this for a second, and yeah, because they're uh, wooden axes, um, it actually goes through the uh, durability fairly quick. So I don't know how well this is going to work. I can uh, leave it like this because it's no no power, um, so it's really not that big of a deal. And eventually, um, all of this stuff will get cleared out, and. It's going to use the axe a little bit less, just like it did there. <clears throat> you can see that it didn't go through the entire durability in a single swoop, so that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah, eventually this will uh, start stabilizing itself, and that should be good. So let me check over here. Um, I decided to uh, make the maximum out 128, but I think I completely drained this. I am still struggling with this. Um, it's still causing me some issues and I can't tell what time of day it is it looks like it's nope oh, Sun just came up alright so yeah I do need to keep fiddling around with this I don't understand why this doesn't seem to be working so yeah <laughs> um, right now it's gonna be a manual process until I figure out um, what to do with this but I think we're at least good because this uh, vibrant capacitor has 
8 million RF. I really doubt we're going to uh, go through that anytime soon, and it does look like it cleared it out for me. I don't think this is going to handle the grass and the flowers, so let me go ahead and help it along a little bit. So real nice. Um, and it looks like this is the uh, the maximum size of the uh, the garden or the farm that it's going to have. So I might uh, move this a little bit uh, because right now it's going to be really far away. I don't know. I wonder if it's too close to this side. Maybe not. That should be good. All right, cool. So I might as well create maybe a couple more of these. But I will go ahead and... Uh, sit here for a little bit, uh, monitor the other uh, progress of this because if this is not filling up with axes fast enough then this might pose a problem but it looks like now that this is cleared out it should be fine. There we go and I already had an axe ready in bay. So yeah, that is actually a really good system. I'm going to uh, keep an eye on it. I might have to upgrade these barrels eventually because if it starts pulling in a lot of oak, I don't see a problem with the uh, apples and the saplings, but the uh, oak logs, I might have to do something about that. And I will be back uh, whenever I have something to do next. All right, so this is working out really well. Um, as soon as the uh, axe breaks, it's basically just shoved with a, a new one, and it just continues along its merry way, and that works out pretty well. Um, down for the uh, power situation, however, I have been experimenting with uh, different things, and I decided to create a, a basic capacitor bank because apparently, from my testing, it looks like this stuff for storage, it doesn't mean anything about the machine buffers. It only refers to the uh, capacitor bank storage and obviously I didn't want to uh, check for 25,000 or 25 million RF um, so this one is probably a little bit more feasible since the uh, basic capacitor bank only holds a million RF so this is uh, 750,000 um, RF before it gets down to um, this and you can see that I just turned on the, uh, the redstone signal um, and now it should be emptying its buffer, but this is still a large capacitor and it basically drains um, eventually, especially during the night. I did uh, throttle the output to uh, 128, so this is basically receiving a steady 128 in, um, and this one a difference of getting 32, so it's outputting 128 and getting in I don't know how much. I uh, did replace this with the uh, the Ender energy conduit, even though it's probably not necessary because that is not um, coming in with enough power. So what I might end up having to do, I need to make sure that the solar power generators up here exceeds the buffer, um, which this is 800,000 RF. I might have to create a couple of these. Um, that way there's enough buffer throughout the night. So if it starts draining down there to uh, fill up that basic capacitor, hopefully it won't run through all of the uh, buffer from the uh, solar generators. And why are there saplings out here? Um, so let me go ahead and run downstairs, create a couple more solar generators. So solar, oops, my NEI is off. There we go. Solar generators, and I know that I need eight furnaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm counting faster than it can do it. And I need eight blocks of diamonds. Yes, that's a lot of diamonds. But I'm thinking that if I can uh, create a large power supply out there and it becomes really efficient because it costs nothing. The uh, generators that I have down below, I'm constantly having to go into the nether to reposition my um, lava pump and that has become a pain. So there we go, I got eight of those. So I should be able just to uh, craft one of these guys 
And eventually if I get eight of these, I should be able to uh, throw in a hyper energy transfer node with the eight around it and create the, uh, the other solar generator, which is time 64. So over here, might as well just pop this guy on right. Nope, oh, that is not where I wanted. Um, right there and down below. Oh, that was a weird lag. Um, I need a redstone conduit there. You can move. And I need to force the up connection. In out, strong, I guess. And we also need to pull the power from it. So that. And I should be able to uh, cycle this through and get rid of that guy. There we go. A little bit more efficient there. But now we should have um, one and a half million or um, 1.6 million RF uh, for a buffer up here, which is probably going to be good because, um, well, that is draining. So I still have that same situation because this is not at 90%, but I think it's because I uh, started this whenever the other one was drained. So let me just temporarily configure this one to just shove all of its power into this basic capacitor. Maximum RF is 1000. There we go. And this should fill up wonder, can I just make this a push-pull situation? No? Hmm. Guess that doesn't work there. But I do need to make sure that those uh, buffers up there get full. So, yeah. I might want to just create a few more. I th probably not a bad idea. That way the the uh, buffer up here just totally exceeds anything down um, there that it's going to need. That way I can make it through the night and I have some to spare. So let me go ahead and do that and uh, probably need to uh, start on another farming station um, because, well, I might just reutilize this one for now because I don't know how many farming stations I'm actually going to need because I do want to get potatoes. Oops. That was weird. Potatoes. And I do have a few in here. And do I still have the barrel? And I do. But I might end up with poison potatoes, which probably just use a buffer chest for that. But what I want to do, this is all backlogged. Why is this backlogged? Can I just jump down there? There we go. Why are you backlogged? You're still creating axes. That's not the problem. This is not receiving power. Why is this not receiving power? Oh, <clears throat> what is the uh, power requirement on this guy? Um, 90 RF per, 93 RF per tick. Why are you not receiving power? Or is that just a visual bug? Why is this not working? Why you no work? Well, it must be working because the uh, durability on this axe keeps going down, I think. If I pull that out, it gets a new axe. Um, I don't really want this axe in my inventory. Oh, wow. Wood axes take forever. I'm not sure why this isn't working. Is it losing power? No? Hmm. Hmm. Why you no work? Because this one should. I mean, I guess I could configure this one to uh, <clears throat> push to the... Oh, there we go. I guess I never had that set up. So it's basically been sitting there on um, RF that already had stored. All right, there we go. 
that works a lot better. And that's going to run through the axis really quickly um, until it's able to pull everything out. Just one final check. Um, extract always. Boy, that is taking a long time though. I guess once it uh, clears out all of this, this will eventually get a little bit faster, but I might end up putting a speed boost in there. Might as well, since I'm here. Speed, and I got 10 of them. Uh, five is probably more than sufficient. So let me go ahead and pop those guys in here. Ugh, come on. And you go faster. Oh, wait. Extract faster. There we go. That works. That's a lot better. A lot cleaner. And now, while I'm here, I might as well configure this for potatoes. Let's see what this does. And that was... Oh, it's... apparently it's going to clear it out automatically, which is good. That was really loud in my ear. So I don't know if I need water or not. Do I need water? Probably should. Get my water bucket, or a bucket. Hmm, I wonder if these will stay hydrated. I will have to continue watching that. <clears throat> but I do think that this is going to work out pretty well. Let me create a uh, couple more generators. That way I can uh, make it through the night, as I mentioned before, and I will be back. All right, and I am back, and I went ahead and... Ah! That wasn't what I <laughs> intended. Um, I went ahead and created um, another one, and so I have all three of these. And I was testing a uh, redstone comparator just to see... And it doesn't look like the redstone comparator is going to check to see if this is full. I'm just trying to think of other plans um, for getting the energy out of here. And I am really at a loss. Um, so yeah, maybe it's just a matter of getting both of these capacitors to full um, before I will actually be able to use the... Uh, the engine control on this. So I'll have to do this manually for now. I need to figure out what to do. Uh, might actually put the uh, lever down here so that I can have a, uh, a manual step so that I can get all three of these to actually expel um, all of their energy that they're producing. And is that going down? Yeah, that's going down. This one, I don't think I hooked up. No, I didn't. I need to hook up the redstone there. And where'd it go? Um, oh, it's there. So this one, I need to configure strong signal in out. There we go. So this should cut off the generating and start dumping all of its power into the other uh, banks down below. There we go. So I'll need to uh, keep an eye on this and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work in the long run. It's becoming a pain. Uh, the other thing that I figured out, um, apparently I, um, because this is on the same channel for all of the, uh, the output, I made a mistake and this started pushing a bunch of sticks and planks into that chest. So I uh, took it off the line for now. I might have to, uh, create a different um, channel for this. So I might have this extracting on the brown channel, and this one inserting on the brown, extracting on the brown, in, out, and that should be blue. And this, let me make this one insert on the blue channel. There we go. That might help. And I also created another auto workbench because this one I need to create a hoe. Because now that we're farming potatoes, this is going to run through the uh, hoe fairly quickly. Um, so let me go ahead and configure this one. This one needs to be um, in out on the brown, extract on the blue, and 
always. There we go. So this should start receiving all of that stuff. Um, I might actually pull this one out and put right here. Because I need to get this one to uh, be extract on the north side always on the brown channel. Will that fill in the blanks for all of these? Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, that was a, a pain. Uh, so I have a lot of sticks. <laughs> Probably don't actually need to uh, craft sticks in, for a while, but I do need to uh, go ahead and pop this guy down there. And uh, this one I'm going to configure with potatoes. And let me just grab one. Do that, lock it into place, cool. And I should be able just to uh, plant that back. And yes, because this isn't with water around it, it'll still grow. I think it'll grow a little bit slower, so I might want to uh, go ahead and put water there. I do like this water, oh, there we go. This'll work, cool. So let me come over here and four blocks in four blocks in. Let me just put that guy right there and this should at least hydrate the area uh, for that entire um, spot, the entire quadrant. And I think that will work for me. And yeah, um, this is a very good working system. If I pull this out, it should put a hoe in its place and that'll start uh, working. The only thing is this isn't growing um, very quickly. I probably should figure out something to do with that because I don't want to have to wait sometimes, um, but I don't know. So yeah, I think that's going to uh, do it for today's episode. Um, still have the, uh, the power issues that I had before, um, but at least now we have some auto crafting um, for all of our um, recipes up here for the uh, the hoe and the uh, the wooden axe and that'll keep it stocked at all times at least and we should be able to uh, repeat this process might have even use the the same assembly line uh, for any additional farming stations <clears throat> because I could I could actually have another farming station over here with uh, different things I wonder what else it can do I didn't actually look I know it can do like wheat, but I wonder if it can do like netherrack and stuff like that. So um, let me go ahead and create a uh, another farming station in between episodes. Um, I'll probably move this stuff, all of the other uh, power, over there. Um, still need to figure out how to uh, deal with the other uh, power issues, but I think uh, we're at least good for the uh, the time being. Even if this is a uh, manual process, um, we can continue go ahead and grabbing as much power as possible. This is full. That one's nowhere close to being full. So we'll just have to see. Um, but I really hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you could uh, go ahead and rate the video down below, it'd be great, greatly appreciated. And also, if you like the series, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But for now, this is goodbye.